understand the general point, to put it like a professor, science too is a culture-based activity. But what is the point of the Buddhist sequence near the end? That, that we should remain more open, pluralistic, less insistent on conformity? Yes, it's part of that trap I talked about in Program 1. Uh, the trap set in Program 1 was to in intimate that, you know, Buddhists didn't ask questions and they were dumb and stupid. And in fact, what I'm trying to do is to say, having been through the experience of the series, you recognize that, that people are constrained by the context in which they live to believe that what they believe is true and final, the only real answer ever found. And when you, when you take that and look at, you say, science is like that, and then you look at other belief systems, the Buddhists, in their way, explain the universe entirely satisfactorily for the people who believe in them, as does science for us. So that's, the, yes, in other words, it was a plea for more open-mindedness on our part. Well, uh, Western science, I understand that our values affect how we interpret phenomena we observe, but, but isn't it true that Western science is in some sense incremental? How drastic are these revolutions that change the universe? I think, first of all, that it's incremental, that it grows and grows and grows. It's a kind of rewrite of history that quite often you find in scientific books about their own activities. You know, people in the past were always aiming towards us. Anyway, if you look at most of the major theories, they were blown away. Uh, Copernicus. Before Copernicus, the sun went round the Earth. After Copernicus, the Earth went round the sun. I mean, how different can you get? That's not one thing building on another. It's one thing destroying another. And I think, except for technology, you know, building tables and chairs and bits and pieces, apart from that, uh, what happened has not been a steady accumulation, a steady move towards the final truth. No. You use the space shuttle uh, as an image of uh, scientific achievement. Um, uh, in many minds, uh, since that material was shot, the space shuttle, like uh, Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, mm. uh, has become a symbol of a kind of overreaching of scientific hubris. Yes. Um, you hold out great hopes for the computer. Um, but isn't it possible that that, too, is in some sense a naive expectation, that it can, can revolutionize human society, yes. reduce human waste? There, there, there is one, it seems to me, one major difference, and that is that the computer is already in the hands of people. Uh, once upon a time, 20 years ago, people said, the computer will, will all be controlled by the computer because there'll be this massive mainframe brain somewhere to run the world, you know, and look, everybody has one, everybody has something. Soon there will be people selling information, knowledge, experience on disks uh, because the marketplace works like that. It's too late for uh, society to be in the grip of the monster machine anymore, ever since uh, the days the personal computer began. So that's why I am optimistic about the effect of the computer on our society, because it, for the first time ever, those massive tools of science are actually in the hands of ordinary people to a great extent, in a way that makes it very difficult to control them. You can't, what are you going to do with all these people modem talking to each other? You can't come into the telephone lines and, and, and uh, control. But not too late in a place like the Soviet Union, where yeah. government control is a reality. And to go back to program number one, the NORAD sequence, uh, Rome was overrun by barbarians. What's to keep that from happening to us? I be believe the awareness of uh, the fact that other systems uh, are neither right uh, nor wrong. They are what they are. I mean, if we are to live, we, it seems to me, we must coexist. Uh, that's why NORAD was an irony at the beginning of the theory. Uh, to be so certain that you will destroy it seems to me to be, to be taking the wrongest possible road. Uh, and that's why this series has built, I hope, gradually towards an understanding that the only way to continue to exist safely is to be tolerant, as tolerant as possible. You have a new educational model in mind. Teach people to go looking for the material, uh, and they'll discover that there are many different ways of seeing how the world operates, and that in turn, I think, will feed back into creating a safer world for everybody. Sounds like your next series. Hope so.